All right, Brett Parkinson, MD, is here with us today. He's the director of breast care program at Intermountain Medical Center in Murray, and he's also one of the top breast cancer experts in the nation. So what was your response when you heard about Jolie's decision today? You know, I was delighted that she was so public with it because this brings more awareness to the breast cancer gene. It's very rare. It's the BRCA1 gene. There are two breast cancer genes, mm -hmm. and basically it is an abnormality or a mutation of that gene, and she has that mutation. And that put her at incredibly high risk for developing not just breast cancer mm -hmm. at about 65% or more, but ovarian cancer. She's got a 50% chance wow. of later developing ovarian cancer. Uh -huh. And we were just talking about this. The only way to get rid of that or, or to not ever run into that issue is basically to have your ovaries removed. You know, you can screen for ovarian cancer, but it is not as effective as screening for breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Most women who present with ovarian cancer present later. So one of the the options for women, and it's probably the best option, who are done childbearing, who have the breast cancer gene, or this cancer gene, is to undergo bilateral removal of the ovaries. Okay, and so let's talk about this gene, the BRCA1 gene. Um, how is it tested? Uh, it's a simple blood test. It usually costs a few thousand dollars. Um, not all women should have it, however, just the women who are in increased risk. Mm -hmm. And those women include um, a, a subset of uh, women who have two or more first-degree relatives who've di been diagnosed with breast cancer, mm -hmm. particularly if one of them is premenopausal, or if they have first-degree relatives with ovarian cancer. And women of Ashkenazi Jewish descent are also at increased risk. I mean, your risk as an average woman is about 1 in 400 of carrying the gene. If you're an Ashkenazi Jew, then it's about 2.5 percent, or about five-fold higher. Wow, okay. And so there are other options out there, I guess, other than just getting a double mastectomy, just knocking it out. Right. Most of the women that we see at Inner Mountain actually choose to undergo screening surveillance. Mm -hmm. um, what she chose is a viable option, and I would never criticize her for that. A lot of women say, you know, I'm not ready to undergo bilateral mastectomy, maybe I could do screening. Well, we know that mammography, though a good test, is imperfect, but breast MRI is excellent. And we are able to find cancers when they're very small with breast MRI and even with mammography. So women with the BRCA1 or 2 mutation will often undergo yearly mammographic and MRI surveillance. But what she decided to do, well, since she was at such increased risk, was eliminate as much as she could the risk. It doesn't eliminate it 100%, but it drastically reduces her risk of developing breast cancer. All right, let's focus on Utah alone. How many women in Utah could be affected by this gene? Well, when we look at the number of women, it's basically one in 400. Mm -hmm. So there are women out there who carry the gene and they don't know it. So what I encourage women to do is look at their family history. Mm -hmm. If they have a uh, kind of an odd history of ovarian or breast cancer, they ought to talk to their doctor and say, would I be a candidate for seeing a geneticist? Before testing, you'd want to confer with a geneticist. Yeah. And so what about IMC? That's obviously where yeah. you work. What kind of programs do you guys offer there for women if they're interested? We have a genetics counselor. Mm -hmm. So if we are screening a woman and we see on her history sheet that she has a suspicious pedigree, meaning ovarian or breast cancer in the family, first or second degree relatives, then what we'll do is we will inform her of that mm -hmm. after she does a risk assessment. And then if she meets a certain, certain threshold, we'll have her confer with our genetics counselor. And then she can recommend or not recommend that they be tested for the gene. Okay, but overall, this uh, situation with Angelina coming out, saying what she's done, you see this as a positive this thing. This is a positive thing. It gets people discussing the issue. It raises awareness of the breast cancer gene. And it also raises awareness that breast cancer is a very pervasive disease. Remember, one in eight women will develop breast cancer, so all women are at risk. She just was very proactive because her risk was much, much higher than the average woman. Wonderful. Brett, thank you so much for joining us today. Very insightful information. Thank you. All right, Brett, we'll send it back to you. Gas prices are going.